The new M3 family of chips have just been released along with new MacBook Pros. But why? Why do we need yet another upgrade as software developers or anyone else? Well, just like I appreciated the really short and to the point keynote from Apple last night, I hope you'll appreciate the cut to the chase here. And if you have an M1 Pro Max or Ultra or M2 Pro Max or Ultra, you don't need this upgrade unless you're one of those few who run out of machine learning capacity or you need the extra GPU boost for game development. So if that's you, you can go check out one of my other videos down below. Hopefully I saved you some time. Now for the question that's on every developer's mind, is the new MacBook Pro with the M3 chip going to run Visual Studio Code? Now, I'm not one for rumors, which is why I ordered three of them with different configurations to test it right here, but I think it's safe to say that yes. Yes, it will run VS Code. There are three new chips, M3, M3 Pro, and M3 Max, all built with the newest three nanometer process technology, but with some interesting differences that bring the lowest price MacBook Pro down to $1,599. 16, let's just say, let's just call it 1600, okay? And also, let's just say it's a MacBook Pro body with not so pro internals. That's not to say that it's slow by any means. It's certainly faster than the M1, as Apple kept pointing out in the keynote, never comparing it to the M2 series out loud. But I don't think it's the lack of performance, why Apple kept comparing the M3 line to the M1 line and the Intel lines. And it's also not that weird when you consider what Apple is really trying to accomplish here. Which was kind of weird. Sorry, Max, no conspiracy theories here. More on that in a bit. I'm gonna break down what each M3 series chip offers individually, but all of them across the board get more CPU cores. And the biggest focus here was on GPU improvements, showing that Apple is really going after the gaming market and the game developers now. It's about time, right? Specific to GPU, there's something called Dynamic Cache, which is a new feature that dynamically allocates GPU memory in real time, improving GPU utilization. There's hardware accelerated mesh shading and hardware accelerated ray tracing for the first time in Macs ever, which if you're not familiar with it, it uh, models the physical properties of light more realistically, so really good for games. The neural engine is also up to 60% faster than the M1 series, really showing that Apple is focusing on AI and machine learning learning as well here. Now I ordered three MacBook Pros for testing here. I know the iMac also got the M3 chip, but I decided to skip it this time. First and foremost, I think the $1,600 model will be a huge hit for Apple. So I definitely ordered one of those. I think a lot of people are gonna be getting one of these and it's a new 14 inch design, not the old 13 inch with a touch bar. Looks like the touch bar is gone now. Some loved it, some hated it. I never used it myself. My question is how the heck is Apple going to sell any more of that uh, $2,200 MacBook Air? Specifically about the M3, it comes in an eight core configuration with 10 core GPU. Configuration goes up to 24 gigabytes. So at the lowest price, it's 1599. If we max this out to two terabytes of storage, we're at $2,600. I also ordered an M3 Pro MacBook Pro. A lot of you like that chip, and I constantly get requests to test that configuration, but this time it's a little weird. Now the M1 Pro and the M2 Pro were super popular with developers because it was still a Pro machine, so you can run uh, multiple virtual machines on there, uh, Docker containers, or if you just need extra power for your builds, that's the machine to get. The M3 Pro claims it's up to 40% faster than the M1 Pro. There are some weirdnesses about this particular model. Standard is 12 core CPU and 18 core GPU, but there's also a binned chip. Binned just means that there's a die that's used to make the chips, and some of them don't make it in the testing, so they create a new model for that, and that's uh, the 11 core core CPU, 14 core GPU variety. So you're saving 400 bucks by getting less cores there. So those are the two configurations. But the weird thing is the memory here. You can get 18 gigabytes or 36 gigabytes. Usually you get eight, 16, 32, and so on. But here they might be using six gigabyte modules instead of four gigabyte modules or eight gigabyte modules. And that's why we end up with these numbers. So if we max this one out to 36 gigabyte unified memory, and let's say four terabytes of storage, you're up to $3,600. $3, Besides the weird memory configurations, this is the only chip that actually went down in transistor counts from 40 billion in the M2 Pro to 37 billion transistors in the M3 Pro. Does it matter? Probably not, especially with the new three nanometer process. Just something weird I noticed. All the other ones kind of went up uh, in the number of transistors. This one went down. And another weirdness about this one is that it has six efficiency cores and five or six performance course. So about an equal 
amount of performance cores and efficiency cores, whereas the base M3 has four efficiency cores and the M3 Max has four efficiency cores. This one, the M3 Pro, has six. I don't know. I don't know why to be tested. <laughs> and finally, I ordered the M3 Max MacBook Pro. This is gonna be a replacement for my machine. I'm currently on the M2 Max 16 inch machine, even though this one is only a few months old. Is the new one going to cut it and be superior to my daily driver? I don't know yet, but I'll let you know. Uh, so subscribe to see those reviews because the M2 and the M1 Maxes are gonna be going down in price quite a bit now. So uh, there might be some good opportunities to get a really nice machine maybe even um, secondhand from a certain YouTuber. I don't know. Now, who is the M3 Max for? Well, this is for the top pros that don't want to compromise at all. I could say that, but I could also say it's for people that like uh, shiny new objects and the best of the best, and they always get the latest and greatest. That would be more, I guess, accurate. But, but really, there are cases for this M3 Max. Yes, there are. For example, it comes with 16 core CPU and a 40 core GPU. That's a lot. And it supports up to 128 gigabytes of unified memory. Apple's claims is that this chip is gonna be 80% faster than the M1 Max. It'll be able to handle large transformer models with billions of parameters. So this is the one for those game devs and machine learning people. There might also be an M3 Ultra on the way if you really need to fit a 200 gigabyte machine learning model into memory. We'll see. It's not been announced yet. By the way, you can only get the top spec model in a 16 inch version, not 14 inch version. So the 16 core CPU and 40 core GPU, 16 inches, and it starts at $4,000. That's for 40 gigabytes unified memory, one terabyte of storage. The configuration I bought was 64 gigabytes, two terabyte storage. So that one cost me $4,600. From what I recall, uh, probably $300 more than my M2 Mac cost me so the prices are going up on these things if we max this out to 128 and 8 terabyte storage we're at $7,200 which is a lot <laughs> But the nice thing is that either they made a ton of these things or there just wasn't such a huge demand for them because, well, they're available next week. All right, so there are a couple of issues that uh, left me scratching my head here. But when I thought about it, it made a little bit more sense. For example, the base model M3 MacBook Pro is really a MacBook Air internals inside a MacBook Pro case. So you get all the benefits of the new case, the screen, the uh, connections, uh, HDMI, SD card, headphones, the nice speakers, all those extra bonus things, and oh, and the fan. So Apple's really pushing the MacBook Airs into a, a category down, away from people that are really considering professional machine to more of a consumer grade machine, which is kind of the way it should be. Now, a lot of people are going crazy about having an eight gigabyte machine as a MacBook Pro. Well, I recently did an insane developer torture test on three MacBook Airs trying to kill the memory. And what was interesting is that the machines throttled, thermal throttled before there were hit any memory related issues, even with tons of swap used. In other words, memory management is so incredible on these machines that even though I had so much stuff running on it, thermal was the only issue. Guess what? Thermal is now addressed with the new MacBook Pro body. So you can watch that recent memory torture test. I'll link to it down below, right below the like button. Now, Apple did focus on comparing the new M3 line to the M1 and Intel lines because according to the new numbers, M3 will spank those, yes. They did show some numbers for the M2 comparisons on the screen, but they didn't really talk about it or focus on the M2 owners because, well, uh, not many people upgrade as often as talking heads on YouTube, and especially because the M2 addressable market it is relatively small. The M2 sales weren't that great. Only if you're the type of person to always buy the latest, then you will do as you do. But uh, in the presentation, Apple just targeted the people that will have the biggest gains, Intel Mac owners and M1 owners. Like I said earlier, in my opinion, most people that already have the M1 series machines won't need this, but keep an eye for my upcoming tests to see if the new chips will improve your workflows anyway. And this video is not sponsored, but I wanna thank the channel members for helping me with these purchases, because this stuff is expensive. Massive.